I have my friend, new friend, Sorel with me. Welcome to the show. Thank you very, very much for having me. This is so exciting. This is ridiculously awesome. Because you popped up on my, just my YouTube feed so much. Excellent. So much. Which Thank is you, YouTube so algorithm. Good. Yeah, <laughs> you've been having a good six months, I would say. Wow. Um, and so it's so exciting to talk to you and to meet you at Buffer. And the first thing I m- noticed was just like your energy is amazing. I love it. It's so cool <laughs> to be you. here with you. So give people just a little rundown on what your channel is about mm-hmm. and what you have been up to recently. Wow. Oh, wow. That's a big and, ass yeah, question. We can <laughs> unpack it. Okay. Welcome. My name is Sorella Moore. Uh, currently on my channel, I would say I'm focusing mostly on photography, making money online, influencer stuff, uh, videography a little bit, um, human optimization. That's like a big thing that I want to get into next because I love this topic. Um, what do you mean? Like, Tim Ferriss biohacking kind stuff. of like that yeah, yeah, this yeah. is I kind of live for this I'm yeah. really into health I'm really into like like brain stuff figuring out the brain um just how to make yourself be as awesome as possible and run at 100 percent mm. oh 110 percent let's just go there yeah um but I want to do it in a way that's different like utilizing YouTube because not a lot of people are doing that but at the same time like right now I'm kind of known for my advanced selfies on <laughs> YouTube like people what really is an advanced selfie? Well, uh, an advanced selfie. <laughs> <Please explain. laughs> so I used to travel. I do travel a lot by myself, like massive solo traveler for years um, to, I don't know, 44 destinations, I think right now, which is fun. Um, but like I, I am a nomad as well and I full time travel. I don't have a house. Um, so when I was traveling around, I wanted to, t- to get some great photos of myself. And I just could not stand the fact that when you handed it, like the, the camera to someone you else. Trust oh my god, it was a disaster. Yeah. And I was like, this is this sucks. And I knew how to take my own, I knew how to how to take great photos because I I'm a photographer. And I was like, wait, why don't I just put it on a tripod and take really cool photos of myself? And then I just getting kept on getting better and better and better. And I started making it look like it was uh, like a photographer, like was, a photographer taking was taking it. And like I was, I'm trying to incorporate high fashion modely feels because mm-hmm. I, I get bored. So I want to challenge myself. And now, and then as a joke, I called it the advanced selfie. It's so good. It's so ridiculous. It's so good. Are other people doing it now? How's that it's, hashtag? It's, it's going, going well, like <laughs> super well. And I made, wait for this. <clears throat> I made an advanced selfie university. <laughs> oh, oh, that uh, digital product game? Yeah. Digital right, product guys, game. Linked down in the description <laughs> below. Thank Make you. sure to check it out. So what do people get in this advanced selfie university? Well, they get everything they need to know about how to take an advanced okay. selfie. Not camera information, not how to take a photo, but like posing information, um, how to set up the camera differently to make it an advanced selfie mm-hmm. instead of just like a boring standard selfie because yeah, you want to stand out on that Instagram. Yeah. But I just th- thought it was really funny that I called it a university because I'm just shitting on the f- idea that it is a selfie. Like it's a selfie. That's I all it is. <laughs> so much though. Yeah. But I think honestly on the interwebs, there's so much stuff. It's so saturated and humor and just being yourself is such a good way to cut through the clutter. Cause yes. I think a lot of people get sucked into trying to be someone else. And then it's so hard to take, just, have fun in life when you're so busy being someone else and so i think that's what a lot of people are seeing with you is like oh you're fun you're genuine and also really interesting Mm -hmm. because once i started checking out your videos the thing i was most confused about was like where is she so first i would see just backgrounds that i've never seen before you know you're not just like in a typical room or apartment uh the the walls were just so beautiful and rugged and like colors i've never seen before and apparently that was like a home in germany yeah just an airbnb i found that i loved okay and so you don't have a home i don't have a home so explain that i don't have a home (laughs) you just you're like a nomad i'm a nomad are you a minimalist are you a nomad Um, are you what do you put a label on it I, uh, I guess I'm a nomad and a minimalist, okay. I would say. So I have a bag that I travel with and that is my life. Wow. Uh, yeah. I bet that's pretty freeing. It's, I don't even know. Okay. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Can Tell we come me. back for, to two things? I want to yes. talk about like why on earth do people copy each other online? That okay. is just driving me insane. I don't understand because you're unique. You're awesome. Mm-hmm. I don't even know if we have to come back to that. But you're not yeah, going to stand out by that. copying people. That's one thing yeah. I wanted to say. The second thing. Okay. Uh, minimalism freeing yes why do people have so much stuff i let's see (laughs) i'm not a hoarder okay i'm not 
I'm not the opposite of minimalism, but I would say I'm a normal person. Mm-hmm. I've never had, I mean, I understand how ridiculous it is to have like storage. I've never understood that. Mm-hmm. I've never lived in a home or me personally have storage, but I am in a small New York City apartment. And so I manage with that, but I still have stuff. And Mm -hmm. I think I enjoy, I know what, like I'm self-aware of where I get my enjoyment. So like half of it is from people and Mm -hmm. interactions with people Mm -hmm. and hanging out with my boyfriend, hanging out with my family. Like I'm very aware that like that is what ultimately matters in life. It makes me ultimately happy. But like right underneath that, it's like, oh my gosh, new camera gear, a new iPhone, like new high tech something like that. That's exciting to me. So I think it depends on the person, yes. you know? It does. But the way that I also, I would recommend this for everyone. Yeah. Um, it sounds like you're doing all right. Like if you're living in a small apartment and you're not just like, I think it's the typical consumers that just, they get set, momentary satisfaction mm-hmm. from buying something like they get sucked into the game like you're gonna feel so good if you buy this product like mm-hmm. no you're yeah. not <laughs> yeah. Yeah. so um but i just couldn't believe i've never really had that much stuff like i've traveled so much throughout my life mm-hmm. we've moved uh countries multiple times i've lived in a few countries and just i don't know for some reason every single time i detach from th- things i know exactly where my stuff is around the world i've mm-hmm. only got like a few couple of boxes with like um at my parents storage they just bought a house Your they parents? were also minimalists okay. and oh, wow. uh, uh full-time travelers for two Whoa. years yeah where do they where do they settle down they settle down in nimbin in australia right now okay. which is uh the pot capital of australia just uh FYI. they don't they don't smoke <laughs> my mom's <laughs> just a massive hippie I love it's that. awesome <laughs> is that what what is your accent is it australian australian yeah okay. i'm beyond the british accent i'm terrible okay it's accent. also okay because you have a very unique one I exactly feel like. people actually i get slayed sometimes online they're like why don't you have an australian normal australian accent i'm like dude i travel too much this is, is what's so happened funny. well okay so they just bought a house in australia mm-hmm. and you grew up there but when did the traveling start and why i mean was it just because that was their lifestyle so you were kind of yeah. like oh this is all i know or oh my gosh i love this being going being able to go back and talk yeah. about this stuff oh this is so fun <laughs> so when i was a little girl <laughs> let's bring it all the way back <laughs> i um we moved from australia i was born in bondi like around bondi beach so i lived on the beach my whole childhood uh, childhood until i was five and then we moved um, to Poland. My dad was living in Poland, actually. So we moved over and it was meant to be like a really short trip. We went over for, uh, ended up being six years till I was 11. And then we were meant to come back to Australia for two months for a holiday. And we ended up staying forever again <laughs> until I started <laughs> traveling at, at the age of like 17, yeah. 18. So you finished up school in Australia? Yeah, finished. Yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah, yeah. And then, yeah, I was traveling every, uh, like two to three months every single year since I was 18. Uh, at 18, I did a solo trip for nine months. Wow, and, where'd you go? Uh, Canada, mostly. Hey, <laughs> that's where we're at right now. What's up, Toronto? <laughs> that's appropriate. That's so cool. Oh, that's so cool. I, I've always wanted to spend more time here. Mm. I mean, the scenery Toronto's is nice. insane. Yeah, and yeah. just like, I've only been in the cities while here, mm. and all of the pictures and video you see are just like out there in the mountains. Oh, the mountains. I need oh, to take some crazy. time to do that. So nine months here, that's nice. Mm-hmm. I was mostly based in one place because I was doing outdoor education camps, summer camp kind of leader, so oh, that was fun. Yeah. Cool. So did you completely skip over college? No. Or university? No. So I went back to Australia after that trip, and I did like a sped up at a private college. I thought it was a great idea to speed up my uh, degree Bachelor of Business major in marketing um, ended up costing me three times the cost. I didn't realize that if you go to a private college. (laughs) Yeah, two Two years years? instead of three. Um, Oh, so the normal is three, not four. Well, in Australia, it was three. It's like Bachelor of Business major in marketing. That's such a wink of a a degree. Seriously, I (laughs) learned everything in three months when I was working instead. Yeah, yeah. So if you get me on that topic. Oh, no. Let's lean into college a little bit. Okay. So, I mean, two years. Do you, in hindsight, do you think it was worth it? Or is it one of those things where I kind of regret? I don't it. think you can regret anything that you've really? done. I don't think so. Yeah. Because um, <laughs> let's get spiritual. Yeah. <laughs> no, I just think that everything happens for you. It's mm-hmm. like everything is there for a reason. So everything you've ever done 
in your entire life has led, led you up to this moment yeah. right here. And that's pretty magical if you yeah. think about I it. I think about it all the time. I know it's like crazy. leading like John, my boyfriend. I think about all the time how sometimes I'll wish like, oh, I wonder if I didn't become a YouTuber if I would have like pursued that business idea. Mm. But then I think about, oh, my gosh, if I didn't become a YouTuber, it has as much crap as everyone gives YouTube, it has like radically changed my life for the better. And the fact that I am doing what I love and I get to meet amazing new people all the time and like build epic creative friendships. And like, you know, I met John through YouTube. Then I'm like, oh wait, no, I thank goodness I did every, you know, every single thing that happened. Yeah. Um, but yeah. Yeah. I totally. Hear. Sometimes I think about it too. I'm like, oh, I really wanted to be a singer when I was young. Yeah. And, but then just the, the ability to do anything you want and say anything you want on YouTube instead of being sucked into an industry which mm -hmm. tells you what you should look like, sound like, blah, blah, mm -hmm. blah. I'm really glad that I uh, consciously un or unconsciously chose, chose this path. Were you in a band? No, I, I, I just wanted to see, I was at, uh, when I was 12 years old, I sang in a, uh, no, 11. I won, uh, won a contest at school and I was like, if I win this contest, this is I'm gonna little be surreal. It. Yeah. I was like, I'm going to pursue singing and I'm going to be a singer. <laughs> <laughs> and then we won, I won and then I moved wow. over to, uh, uh, back to Australia mm -hmm. and that stalled everything because I yeah. had to relearn English again and, um, and integrate back into Australian society. Wow. So do you speak fluent Polish? Yeah. Uh -huh. Is that the Jingle only language you know? Yeah. Okay. Because, well, you already, you know, one more than me. You just seem so like worldly and stuff. I'm like, she probably knows five different languages. Well, the aim, <laughs> the aim but trust now. Me, like you knowing more than your native language is so impressive. Oh, I feel thank you. I feel so dumb around people <laughs> no. that know more than their native language. No. <laughs> well, the aim now, because I just got unaddicted from social media. Mm. I was heavily addicted to my phone, spending like four to six hours a day on it. Yeah. And then I just figured it out and I'm like I massively detaching now. Now is the aim to learn French, Spanish, like maybe even some singing, maybe some guitar. Whoa. So <laughs> wish me luck. Learn the guitar when you jam. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yo, because yeah, yeah, you play. I'm a, yeah, I'm yeah that's player. sick. <gasps> yeah. Let's start a YouTube band. Oh my God, let's do it. Heather. Well, let's do it. You can sing. <laughs> sing and guitar once you get your guitar <laughs> lessons. So why did you decide to cut your social media usage? And what, what was the first indication that was like, oh my gosh, I'm on my phone too long. Because uh, thank goodness the new update with iPhone, whenever I scroll to my uh, other page, it shows me my screen time. It and does? It's, yeah. So that's a new feature of iOS 12. Is it'll... Wow. Yeah. It'll show you your screen time. And so... Why are they doing that, do you think? I honestly think I... Uh, Seatbelts, man. <gasps> they're... Oh. I think it's like they're conscious that they've created this beast. And so now uh, one of my friends, mm. Cody, he put it really well. It's like when cars were created, they didn't have seatbelts and they were, it took so long to shift towards that and raise awareness that, hey, it's dangerous, wear a seatbelt. And now with iPhones, I think the same thing is happening where it's like we've created this monster and yep. guess what? We need guardrails, we need seatbelts. We yes. need to be conscious of how much time we are sucked into this phone. It's so when did it start for you? Like how? It scared like, me Like was it a recent so thing that yeah, you were just like, no. oh, too much? Well, I blamed it on my job. I was okay. like, it's my job. Like this is my job to be on social media, yeah. or whatever. And then I was just scrolling and wasting time. And I, this is the big thing. I, I started noticing that I was becoming dumber. Hmm. And I was not okay with that. Like I don't, I didn't remember the last time I listened to a podcast. I didn't remember the last time yeah. I read a book. Um, and I always said I'm always working. And then mm. I objectively looked at how much I actually was working and how much time was just wasted on scrolling. But the thing was, I was just, I was just becoming dumber. And so I tried, attempted a couple of times. Like I took a week off uh, not long ago. Uh, from social media and that was amazing and I got three life-changing insights from just a week off my phone sure okay well one was like I, I was going through a tough family situation and like I got an insight into what had to happen so that mm. was one thing then I got um my life vision like I'm not kidding like my life vision wow. came to me I was like that's kind of weird is it to be a youtuber until you die yeah, same. That's my life vision. I'm like, you guys are going to be watching me when I'm 90. Yeah, exactly. That would be fun, though. Like, go back to it one day. No, I don't know. That's going to be interesting sarcasm. how we all transition. That was sarcasm. 
<laughs> so what was your third revelation? Mm, I don't actually remember, yeah. but it was good. But life vision. Yeah, I know. That was a big one. I mean, mm -hmm. wow. Yeah, there was something else. But anyway, so then I went back straight onto my phone after that week off, which was kind of yeah. shitty. I wasn't happy with that. Um, and then just I was in Palm Springs not long ago, 10 days, and I was just, I caught myself on the couch just scrolling, mm. scrolling and scrolling. And I was like, what am I doing? And in that moment, I was like, I can't do this. So I, I was like, I sat my boyfriend down and I was like, look, I really have an addiction. Like, I need you to help me. Yeah. And you tell people a lot. They're like, they kind of dismiss it. They say, oh, you know, that's funny. Like, oh, we're all addicted. Right. Ha -ha. Right. But I, if anyone is out there and they've got a problem, like, if some or if someone comes to you and says, hey, I'm really addicted, take it seriously yeah. <laughs> because it's a problem. Mm -hmm. uh, and so I said to that to him and I've really reinforced. I was like, this is how much time I'm spending on social media between four and six hours a day. And then he tallied it and he he made me realize that if I was on social media from the age 20 until the age 100 uh, for the four to six hours uh, a day, that's 20 years nonstop. That's scrolling. scary. That's 20 years. Like That's scary. Yeah. That would be make me waking up at 49 and being like, oh, okay, I've stopped scrolling. 20 years. That doesn't make, that doesn't quite add up, but we did yeah. the maths and it is. So uh, I realized there's so much more time that I, that so many more things I can do with that time. So I backtracked and uh, yeah, I, I want to mm. learn stuff. I want, I don't want to be dumb. I don't want to be dumb. The other and day. And this is what it's doing to us. It's making uh, yeah. us dumb. The other day I was thinking, and this might be just because I'm out of school and we're not, I mean, I think there's so many things wrong with school. The culture of just regurgitating facts yes. is like so toxic and it's like, it doesn't teach us really how to think. The, mm -hmm. the only time in school that I was con like conscious of, oh my gosh, I feel like a better human, a smarter human was actually when I was in my computer science degree and they were teaching us pretty abstract stuff, but the moment we got into programming and it was more of like an actual problem that's like, hey, how do you, I always use this example, but it was more complex than this, but it was like build a pyramid of asterisks and have, you know, there's certain properties or whatever. And then when you like sit down, you're like, okay, I have this tools of bags, like for loops and blah, blah, blah. And like, how do I take everything that I know and somehow make something out of nothing? Like that was so rewarding and, it was weird because the moment I realized it, I was actually editing a video in Premiere. And I was like, how do I do this? Like, I had this problem and I felt like a ninja because I was like, oh, if I nest all these clips together and then I do this and that, that solves my problem. And I was like, I think I've gotten smarter, you know? And so I don't, I think when you're not like continually training your brain and you just get consumed with consuming, it's dangerous. It's so scary. Yeah. But so so what are what are some of the things you're gonna do? Like learn stuff, mm -hmm, guitar, new mm -hmm. languages. And yes. and then how are you going to stop? Like how oh. do you how do you set this down? Well, okay, a couple of things. Yeah. <laughs> I also wanna um, say I think a lot of us don't ha don't have the skill to critically think anymore. What you were mm, saying about yeah. regurgitating information. Holy crap, mm -hmm. that's so true. Uh because it's, it's like, that's all oh, it is. let's not solve real problems. Let's just memorize stuff. And I, the more that I objectively look at the education system and all these other stupid things that we're told is normal, the more I've realized how much it is just easy, convenient, outdated systems mm -hmm. to just keep people like, Meh. Yeah, and spending money. Exactly. And, and not being healthy, not looking after themselves, mm -hmm. not creating amazing ideas that would enhance the world. But slowly, I'm, I'm hoping like people are getting onto more organic food, eating healthier, mm -hmm. taking time off phones. I think the world is at a nice, beautiful shift where it's pe uh, power We're to the people. We're having those realizations. Yeah, and definitely. Hopefully because there's more transparency, I think it can be more depressing because mm -hmm. we're now kind of rolling back the curtains on people who are in power and yes. it's kind of scary. But hopefully that means that there's good to come. I think. Because yes. of the transparency. Uh, I am hopeful. But yeah, something that's cool about iOS 12 is you can actually set time limits nice. for each app. Nice. So you can nice. say, okay, only 30 minutes on Instagram. Well, I guess it's dangerous for us though because what if we got to post a gram? That's our job. I know, but it takes 
<laughs> it takes 30 minutes, man. I used yeah. to tell myself, I have to check my comments. No, I don't. Yeah. I don't have to do shit. Mm-hmm. Like post it in the morning or whenever the scheduled time is. Yeah. Uh, I reply to like, I try to make it a hundred comments mm. and then I just like leave it. And then you don't have to get back yeah. to it. Yeah. Yeah. And I like to reward the people who are there yeah. sooner because yeah. you know, they're like subscribed or maybe they have they notifications really care. and mm-hmm. they care. Like those are the people you exactly. want to reward, not the trolls that come along exactly. like later. Yeah. Um, but with, with the moments, uh, sorry. So I install yeah. an app on my phone called moments. Okay. Moment. And there's a different version for Android. Um, but uh, it, it, you can set like really strict time limits. You can say you're not allowed to be on the phone from this time to this time. Um, and you can only have like two hours max a day on the phone. Um, and then you can also set this really annoying uh, beeper that beeps at you every three seconds. And it's the most annoying sound in the world. If you pick up your phone and you're on it, it was going to be like, Wah! Whoa. Like, it's so annoying and i had it on for the first two days and it i don't know it broke the cycle so now it's not wow. i and i don't need it anymore but i just had to put those things in place mm-hmm. and then also just remember 20 years <laughs> wow so that that really helped That's to break the cycle very good perspective i'm still working on it i'm still not 100 percent, yeah. but i'm definitely getting better that's so cool that's epic yeah so where to next in terms of travel because you know you don't have a home so are you okay me i don't really like camping or anything Mm -hmm. i'm Mm -hmm. i'm very much like a hotel gal (laughs) okay so do you like backpack and stuff um no okay (laughs) okay i used to but now i mean i work on the road it's it's i i live the exact same life as you do Mm -hmm. except i have just less positions yeah Possessions, possessions, yeah. possessions, <laughs> possessions, and I just um, move house all the yeah. time. But I find Airbnbs that they're my favorite because I can cook and I can do, do everything yeah. normally. My morning routine, and they usually have better Wi-Fi. Yeah, exactly. And I don't know hotels. Oh, I just eh, no. Yeah. I need to be able to cook. Like yeah. I love cooking. Well, no, that's that's such a lie. <laughs> I, I don't cook. My boyfriend cooks, so I love it when he's well, got a kitchen. <laughs> so does he? Does he follow? Like you guys travel with each other? He just started yeah. traveling with me. Cool. So before it was busy, we had completely different schedules. Yeah. And now finally we we've linked linked up. And awesome. Now Does he do his own thing too? Entrepreneurial. Yes. Life? Now he good. Yeah. Before he was as well, but he was more committed to a, a location. Um, yeah. But now he's starting his own bio biohacking podcast on health, oh. which is awesome. So I want to. This is a very Tim Ferriss question, mm-hmm. and we're both fans of Tim Ferriss. Yes. So why not? But like, what is your routine are you a big believer of waking up early in the morning going to bed at an appropriate time like do you hit emails do you create top like the first thing in the morning what's what's your jam my jam yeah jam jam jam. yeah yeah. so the morning routine i actually picked up a lot of it from tim ferris yeah (laughs) i did his morning routine as a test on my youtube and i was that was the first "Hmm, video i ever saw i quite like this yes so uh it consists of waking up pretty early um and then what's pretty early it's between six and seven okay generally and then i i usually meditate straight away within 20 uh, within a minute or two for 20 minutes and you not fall back asleep i don't know i don't know i used to but i think i don't know what happened that's that's now i maybe it's practice i don't routine power of routine that's good (laughs) and then yeah i do that then we have we make our special bulletproof coffee which is a delicious and then bulletproof coffee oh my what does that mean i feel like me and leon are changing people's lives right now with yeah what Uh, please drink coffee though yeah i love okay all right hold up it's also going to help you with energy making the coffee last longer okay which is good uh so you have just a normal black coffee mm-hmm. then you add uh butter to it which unsalted butter it's, i already like where this, this is, is so good and we have me and leon we have like a tablespoon or maybe even two sometimes so we have a lot okay um then well in a big cup not like a tiny tiny yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so a big cup and then we add mct oil okay. uh, coconut oil and a little bit of honey and then you blend it it is the great it is the greatest thing in the whole wide world did you see i dream of this did you see how there's recent i mean stuff is going like this all the time people mm-hmm. are saying it's the worst thing is the best thing but like coconut oil isn't good for you i don't believe that so for a second so why like how do we know sarah uh, how i don't really whatever makes you feel good right, right i think right. that's what it comes down to because everyone is because right. I, I guess their thing was saying like too much fat in it that's what they were yeah. saying and i'm well, like well and traditionally Hello. like oils aren't good no but oils are good 
Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oils are great for you. Yeah. Don't go for the sunflower oils or anything like that. Go for yeah. olive oil. Super healthy. Don't cook with olive oil. Cook with coconut oil because that can withstand the degrees, the the, the heat of the degrees. Because mm-hmm. um, the they were saying like, because they were almost saying uh, like butter as a substitute for that. Like the like that's always going to be better. Than butter is a, yeah. also very healthy. Like a it's coconut just that, oil. That, that, that um, so ages ago i feel like this is a health podcast now. sorry i know because i'm curious I'm is, like, you probably know more than me no so. it, i just it, this is the craziest thing we there was a um they were trying to push one thing in the marketing world back in the day and it was like they were trying to cut out uh either sugar or fats they were trying to figure out which one was the bad one for health and uh the guy that ran the a huge sugar corporation or whatever he, uh, he uh, was so heavily protesting against them saying that sugar's unhealthy that it became uh, fat-free stuff. Fat-free is so bad for us huh. because it's sugar f- sugar that causes all the drama. If you have fat-free stuff, there's so I mean, much I sugar in it. I mean, I think it's pretty obvious that I think sugar is going to be the next, like smoking or something. Yeah, sugar's horrendous. But and people still it's everywhere but, too. But people saying like fat is right. bad for you? No, 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 no. Right. But in moderation, right? Everything in moderation. Ah, see, I try to have a liter of olive oil every week. Really? It's so good for you. It's so good for you. It, like, what, is it, does, what does it, it do for you? It like it, uh, Instead of things getting stuck to your intestines, it yeah. pushes it through so it can slide like your inside is lubricated. Right. Instead like of, oil. Yeah. Yeah. People don't have enough oils these days because of the stupid fat free movement. Interesting. Yeah. It's crazy. Okay, guys. But well, anyway, research look, your own stuff. Google it for yourself. But the, the coconut oil yeah. thing. Oh, that makes me so mad. But yeah, because anyway, it, it was floating around. But yeah, okay. So bulletproof coffee. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, is bulletproof. this a thing? Like, if I Google it, will oh. people be like? So many people know okay. bulletproof. Yeah. I mean, you say coffee and butter, and I'm there. You're there. Take you're me ready. There. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then I do my journal. I write in my journal, um, and then I s- generally start my day. Um, my day in the middle is very complicated, though. Mm-hmm. Just like you. It's did. always changing. Oh, yeah. every day is changing something different, yeah. like uh, editing or a video creating videos it's so messed up and yeah. weird um the nighttime routine is still iffy but i'm trying to get better at it yeah. get off the screens two hours before sleep time and go back to bed at a reasonable time because the amount of studies now also saying how sleep is crazy important oh yeah like i don't know this stupid h- hustle thing like don't sleep grind 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 it's like man mm-hmm. you gotta look after your body oh totally and yeah all it took well in high school and college i just didn't sleep because it was so hard like the pressures of AP classes and basketball and guitar and then oh my god like I need to pursue this video thing um but then once I started let's see it was like after one year of being a full-time YouTuber and I kind of got my ish together and I stopped daily vlogging that now I will sleep seven to nine hours every single night and it's like always a joke with John that I'll be like I'll set my alarm for seven hours and I'll be like all right It'll be midnight. I'm getting up at seven. I'll be like, okay. And I get up at nine. (laughs) Yeah, nice. (laughs) Yeah, sometimes it'll be like eight to nine hours. But I think that's something like that should be something you're bragging about. Mm -hmm. That, you know, you you wake up, you kill it hard, but you have your ish together to where you can prioritize those extra two to three hours of sleep because it's important. Mm -hmm. You got to look after yourself. Exactly. I don't know what's the point of running down your body when we're mm-hmm. meant to be living to 100. Now studies are saying like 120 will be our standard for nice. all of us. Oh, my God. Can we survive this earth until 120? <laughs> I feel like it's just going to explode. <laughs> I feel like, I yeah, know. I think people are coming together. I mean, the... the I like that you're an optimist. Oh, I for like, sure. Yeah. Because usually I'm that person in the room. <laughs> but now you're like... Compared no. to John. Okay. <laughs> Because he thinks all humans are terrible. <laughs> well, it's, I'm, I'm sorry I'm speaking for you, John. But <laughs> usually I'm the one like, I don't think it's that bad. Mm. And I'm one of th- It's one of two things. Either Mother Nature's like, peace, and yeah. kills us. Which, I mean, that's a good thing for planet Earth anyway. Yeah, because uh, humans are very destructive. We are. Or we yeah. get our shit together, which we're slowly doing, like the, the meat-free movement or mm-hmm. substitute for meat or even meat uh, lab-grown meat is mm-hmm. coming up or... Uh, the plastic free m- movement is mm-hmm. doing amazing. Crossing our fingers. Yeah. All right, let's let's go to more superficial territory. Oh, YouTube love this topic. <laughs> numbers, <laughs> subscribers. Yes, YouTube. Mm-hmm. So when I watched your um, like two year anniversary YouTube thing, it was funny because I think we have some overlap. So I too posted my first video in 2011, ah. and it was it was f- fun to 
see that in your video too that oh it's a journey you didn't just start your youtube channel six months ago right like i think when people look at someone and say they're an overnight success it's like uh take a step back bro <laughs> exactly you know like let's <laughs> let's think about this like do some research um so i too posted my first video in 2011 and then i went back at it again 2015 or 2014 2015 and then in 2015 is when I started kind of like consistently posting. And then end of that year, I guess, beginning of 2016 was when I kind of got my break and started building. Yeah. So I remember that video. Yeah. Kate, Casey and I stopped hitting him. So good. Um, and so tell me kind of like, oh, and I saw that you had a rap music video. You put, you got a clip of that. I, I have too many rap music videos. You do? Channel. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I haven't seen those ones. Girl, there's oh. there's still one that's live. So it was my, I've unlisted almost all of them. <laughs> but my senior year of high school, uh, it was an economics project. Okay. And it was the law of supply and demand. And we just rapped about the law of supply and demand. And I posted on YouTube and yes. it got like 30,000 views. That's and I was so like, good. this YouTube thing, I'm making man, this crazy. crazy. <laughs> exactly. And that was the moment. <laughs> Um, so yeah, I mean, what were you doing, doing music rap videos oh. and it seemed like you did some skit stuff and what yes, was that journey like yes, I did. up until this point? Uh, yeah. So I started with comedy. I thought, I don't know why. I think cause I was really heavily watching Jenna Marbles. I saw her explode and I was like, oh, whoa, we can explode on YouTube. Like, how does this even work? Um, and I just love the idea that you could create anything you wanted to, obviously. Um, so I started making humor videos, which was just horrific. That was so dumb. My, <laughs> my first video was me eating a mango. So that was weird. Wow. But, so yeah. you were ahead of your time with the ASMR movement. Oh no, this wasn't, and it wasn't one of bang. those, it wasn't one, it was like <laughs> me just making fun of, uh, like it was a virgin's kiss, it was two religious people getting married and they had never kissed before and it was a horrible kiss so I just made fun of it us using the mango as an example. <laughs> Good content. Quality. I would watch that content. Oh my gosh. Um, and yeah, then I started doing comedy that didn't, I mean I kept going and then when I s probably started YouTube like two-ish years ago. Uh, I was trying to just make sure that my sister didn't go down the path of doing it. I wanted her to see that online you can have uh, creators that are female creators that are not about uh, beauty or fashion because I was so sick and tired of that. Yes. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, that was that was frustrating. But then you're fashion along the way, which is cool. It's like you're smart, doing fun, new stuff, but also like embracing your personality and everything. Yeah. Which is awesome. Yeah. I'm, I'm not discounting the feminine side of things mm -hmm. at all but i just don't want to be in the fashion or yeah or makeup scene um so i got i just wanted to show her that so i went into comedy again which was just stupid i wore a how wig. old is your sister she's 14 now okay. but she was like 11 ish or 12 at the time uh, so i wore a wig a raincoat rain boots and i got into like hot tubs wearing all my clothes i don't know i don't know what happened i'm not really sure what happened <laughs> But I quickly realized that I don't have to do comedy and I don't want to do comedy because it's embarrassing um, uh, and I'm not good at it, <laughs> to be honest. But, yeah, yeah, again, but it's I'm a glad good thing I, to sprinkle in. Yeah, I'm, I'm glad I started YouTube. And I think that was also my mask, hmm. the, the wig and everything. It was just a mask for me. Anyway, so I did that and then I, I started transitioning over to slightly different content. I was very confused for a long period yeah. of time. It takes a minute to figure oh it out. Oh my gosh, I didn't know what I was doing. Yeah. But I got a, also a break, like a German YouTuber. She, uh, We became really good friends and she oh. uh, collaborated. Who? Melina Sophie. Okay. Yeah, uh, legend. She collaborated that with... Sounds familiar. She collaborated with two two of us in Iceland when I was living there, cool. and um, I just I just took it as a sign because I wanted to do YouTube for so long. So I like just I just worked so hard to yeah. to get to um, a good level with YouTube. Um, and yeah, and then now now here I am. But along the way, I started doing like travel stuff, and I won the best job on the planet last year. Out of what seven, is that? Seventeen thousand people applied to travel <gasps> the world for three months to luxurious homes around the world. Who was it with? Third home. And get paid thirty thousand dollars for traveling plus amazing. all expenses paid. Yeah, I think one of my <laughs> one of that's amazing. One of my friends, Andy, too, uh, got a similar thing with beautiful destinations. Ah, nice. Yeah, amazing. Yeah, cool. Um, oh, that's so, that's very close to like, um, you know, I did YouTube for a while, got a shout out, then got a one year residency. 
um and then made youtube my full time yeah so that's cool and it's so people don't realize and same with uh, scholarships for college if you have to go to college like <laughs> you think not about a fan. it <laughs> i'm not i'm not like <laughs> guys it's not worth like entering your money. adulthood with hundreds of thousands of dollars of debt it's just it's not as long as you pursue education i think in different ways because yes. don't, stay, don't stay dumb <laughs> no don't stay dumb always be learning yes. there's so many ways that you can use the internet for good yes. in terms of education and learning but with college there's so many scholarships out there that you can get and the same thing like people don't get it also transfers over into the real world and that there are so many companies right now that are really embracing creative people and they're seeing that there's this gap to fill that they can benefit from you and you telling your story as you create dope stuff and be your artist but they're also com coming in and like supporting financially and supporting with like traveling and yeah. It's so cool. You just got to like look for it. And I think the Adobe Creative Residency is a good example. Beautiful Destinations does um, stuff with that. Like kind of the best job in the world thing. Um, what did you say? Third home? That's third home. Third best, home. Best yeah. job on the planet. Yeah. Um, best job on the planet. I think there's a lot of things. And I truly don't think everyone is meant to be in front of the camera. And so there's so many YouTubers and personalities that also need that number two and number three person that you could be so good at. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. That's my Amen. So yeah. that's cool. So that happened. Mm -hmm. And then after that, were you just like, this is the life I want to live? Yeah. This is amazing. Well, luckily, I didn't, I started YouTube straight away. I was full-time YouTube. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't, I didn't have any plan B. I was living in Iceland at the time. I didn't have anything to do. And I just started creating videos, but I just had my savings that I saved up from working in Australia, like crazy work hours back there. So I, I was just... I almost ran out of money. I was mm -hmm. I had a thousand dollars in my bank account, mm -hmm. and then I won the best job on the planet. I was so cool. I, I had a thousand dollars. I was depressed. I was broke. I was I like pushed all my friends away. Uh, it was just not a good time. Winter in Iceland. I'm an Australian. Didn't work very yeah. well. And then yeah, I won the best job. And since then, it's been like that job saved my butt financially yeah. and also helped me get better at content creation, fast content creation. <laughs> wow, Sarah's phone going oh off. Am God. I like a podcast noob? No, you're popular. No. <laughs> that was an upcoming event reminding me that I <laughs> have stuff to do. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, oh, that's so cool. Ice limit. I've been there once and this is so not a popular opinion, but when I went there, I legit left being like, I don't need to come here again. Yeah, okay. Where did <laughs> you was, go? We, so it was beautiful. So, okay. I mean, it was very cold though. It wasn't winter, mm -hmm. but we basically started in Reykjavik. We went to the West Fords. Beautiful. Oh, cool. Went to, you went that way. Yeah. Um, nice. Went to Isa for, or Isa Fjodor. Yeah. That word. We went there. <laughs> nice. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. um, stayed at Airbnbs and stuff. And then we went one other place, but it was beautiful. But I left being like, I am so not cut out for just like, like long stretches of land and i get it that it's beautiful and honestly maybe i'd go back with a drone because i didn't have a drone at the time yeah. and, and you that also was didn't go sad. to the, the south coast where all the big things are okay because you went to a beautiful area yeah we went to like Reykjavik and oh we did go to the the famous waterfall the wait S K J S S. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I was trying we, to we think of the there. other one. Sellivansfoss <laughs> is the other one. Yeah. Okay. So we but did. Yeah, but you still didn't get to the Glacier Lagoon. Yeah. Which yeah. Is the most so maybe I'll have to go back. Earth. I don't know. I am such. I think I've learned that. You're a city person. Yeah. <gasps> yeah. And I'm a I'm a nature person always. Yeah. I'm so a city person. I don't know how you do it. All the noise. I like it. Uh, Toron Toronto's way quieter than new york yeah, by the way I'm but just earmuffs full time when i'm in new york <laughs> <laughs> don't talk to me yeah, i absolutely love the city um and when i had that realization it was like really good for me because i felt guilty about it forever because right, you're yeah. supposed to like beautiful things yeah and i loved it <laughs> i was just like okay this is enough time yeah like, okay this, i'm That's good so funny. let's go back okay, first person i've met <laughs> yeah let's not do a country trip together then yeah, yeah. maybe uh maybe a, uh <laughs> um, i love european cities yeah, but cities again. I'm yeah. talking like let's go in the nature. Yeah. Okay, let's. I'm not, not do the that biggest. Either. If but okay, however, comma like if there's more of a um, 
like a schedule mm-hmm. and there's things lined up. Mm-hmm. That's why I do like to, I listened to a recent podcast with uh, Tim Ferriss and Bald Guy, glasses, very wise, writes a lot of books. He's so, Seth Godin. Oh, yes, yeah, of course. Yeah, <laughs> and one of his things, or maybe one of his, Tim's, I don't know, someone's basically like, never travel for work, always travel for pleasure. And I'm like complete opposite, <laughs> where yeah, I same. love traveling for work because one, you get paid for it. Mm. And two, there's usually schedules and there's usually things that people plan for you. Yeah, And so right. okay. Iceland, honestly, probably would have been epic if I had more things planned out. Okay. Or in, was maybe with more people. So that's, <laughs> that's what I'll say. Okay, great. If it's, if it's more... <laughs> well, then let's go on a trip. Yeah. And I'll plan it. everything. Perfect. And by plan, I mean I won't plan anything because <laughs> I never plan anything and I just go with the flow. <laughs> and then we'll take some dope photographs. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I think if you do it right, it's amazing. <laughs> but definitely a city person. Okay. Yes. Okay. Cool. <laughs> Did you have... When, when was that realization that you're like, I love nature because oh, yeah. senior year of high school when i went to new york city for the first time after living in texas my entire life it blew my texas. mind yeah Where? texas dallas texas oh because i am i'm Tick-born. thinking of maybe like tr- living a little bit in austin not the same uh, austin yeah go to austin yeah you will feel so at home in right austin. i want to try austin's great cool but dallas it's a little different and i grew up in the burbs <sighs> okay so <laughs> when i first saw new york i was like this oh. is insane take me there what was that moment for you after living in Poland and Australia? After living in Iceland. Iceland? Yeah. yeah. And then going and traveling for with Third Home just last year. Just the beautiful homes there were all around the world, but they were always in Where were some nature. of your favorite places? Costa Rica, baby. It was a really? five-bedroom, ten-story, no, ten, ten-bedroom, five-story house. And I had uh, eight staff to myself. It was just me. Oh my god! I that wish I knew weird. you then. <laughs> yeah, no, I know I invited so many people <laughs> and no one came. I was like, "You idiots!" Okay, like five thousand dollars a night and you missed out. I'm so sorry. So <laughs> let's also talk about traveling, being entrepreneur, YouTube, and also friends. Mm-hmm. Like, do you have? How do I say this without like? Being do I have weird? friends? Cause, yeah, because I honestly I. Do you want to be my friend? <laughs> Let's be friends. But let's be real. Like, we're going to meet up at YouTube conventions. Yeah. We're going to maybe collab yes. here and there. But, like, you're not going to be in New York. Yes, and, I am. like, we're not going to. Well, or, like, oh, okay. uh, like, like so, you're not going to okay. be there. in New York, BFFs. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, like, me, personally, I am more of an introvert. Like, I'm outgoing, but I need my recharge time. And so I don't go to parties. I don't, like, really do stuff. Mm-hmm. Um. And so this world I'm living in, I love it because it's like I get to hang out with my friends while I'm creating things. Mm-hmm. And I think that's like the best use of time. Yes. It can come off as using people like, oh, you're just using your friends as content. But like that's genuinely this how, is how we work, though. I know. And it's so fun. So with your transitioning to traveling, you said that you had maybe some fallouts with friends and stuff. Yeah. What that was, was that experience like? Mm. Uh, well, common misconception also is I'm an introvert as well. Mm-hmm. I recharge by myself. Uh, but I, I think the depression just pushed all my friends away because I was like, I have no friends. I even said this to, and I made it. I made a video being like, I'm depressed. I have no friends. And my friends watched it. And I think that also pushed them away. Yeah. And I didn't, I just like, I was pushing people away. I didn't right. want to have anyone in my life. I even tried to push my boyfriend away. I, I was, so that was dumb. But now my friendship group that I have, it's small. Uh, but it's growing now thanks to having more creative friends, which is awesome. Uh, but it, it was a transition zone when I left and I became a full-time traveler a few years ago. Um, now my friends know that they can't call me and be like, hi, dinner. I'm like, no, I'm in the, on the other side of the world. But when I go to the country, I have catch up with them. I visit them. I'll chat to them when I'm traveling and so forth. Uh, but now, yeah, having creative friends, they completely understand. Mm-hmm. And when we catch up, we're like, oh, my gosh, let's create. It's yeah. It's awesome. I think it's good to have that uh, self-awareness, too, of people knowing that you, like, you're not just going to, like, come over and have a slumber party or just, like, talk I, for an entire day, you yeah. know? And I think sometimes you do have to, I don't know, like, just say no to some relationships mm-hmm. and then embrace ones that are, yeah. like, beneficial and... It's um, your yeah. life, man. Yeah. If you don't like hanging out and talking, I don't do. I don't do gossip, man. I don't do gossip. And if someone oh, what's starts, some, what's some juicy? Let's see. Okay, uh, let's try. <laughs> let's try I the heard gossip. That. <clears throat> I have Paris Hilton. Yeah, she's the worst. Oh my gosh. Oh. Can we stop now? That's <laughs> <pretty bad. laughs> 
<laughs> that's a good that's good because the youtube world is very gossipy I don't, and i think I don't. the worst channels ever are reaction channels and drama channels mm. yeah i agree i mean i i just stick with you know the the, the youtube world so many times people say what you're going to get the clicks and the views if you do uh the gossipy crappy mm -hmm. stupid challenges stuff but at the same time we are getting the deals because mm -hmm. we are the ones that you can refer to and say wow okay these people really know what they're doing they're professional brands want to work with us so hey we get the money which yeah. is what it's it's a job that's actually a good point it's, yeah they're not going to get the jobs no. <laughs> they're going to exactly. get views but so what that is so good yeah and yeah. um and then i want to have friends that i can talk to about this kind of stuff and we just stick to a bubble which is not uh getting the world all toxic you know we're, we're here to enlightened people not really but we're here to you know not do shit in the world yeah. and instead help I don't know where I was going with that. No, that's to good, be honest. Though. But. I mean, because it can be hard sometimes. Because, so my boyfriend, John, he traditionally has always had a group of dudes to just, like, go and skate with. Mm. And that's been, like, a very strong pillar in his life. Just, like, the four homies, go skate. Yeah. Um, and so he actually, he's, like, a normal person and has, like, legitimate friends. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so when... And I, I do too. What does that I have look like, like I have like three to four people in New York who like I would love to just have dinner with for lunch, but it's a very limited amount of people. Mm -hmm. Um, but in sense of just like friends from home mm -hmm. or friends from school, like I don't have that. Mm -hmm. And because I've always kind of kept to myself and I've always been the one on my computer editing for nine mm -hmm. hours a day. And so sometimes I get really bummed on myself when I like see what other people are doing and how they handle relationships but i think it's like okay wait but what works for me mm -hmm. there's no reason for me to be beating myself up yeah it's your life not theirs exactly and sometimes people paint this amazing glorious picture i have so many friends i couldn't handle having so many friends <laughs> that's true too you don't want to compare what's the saying you don't want to compare your real life to people's highlight reels exactly comparison is suicide baby. exactly so sorry i kind of got off track there now being on youtube the past six months mm -hmm. what i said in the beginning how girl you are everywhere yeah yeah and that is amazing yeah, yeah. <laughs> so what was that first video that really mm. popped off for you yeah so was it, it the tim ferris one no it wasn't no okay so i started doing uh in april nothing was really growing i was sitting at 120k just like for months oh months and i was like wow did you ever go below like okay so when was i was losing people yeah were yeah. you ever yeah because when I was at 100K, <laughs> literally 100K, I would go down 100 and then I'd go back up 200 and then I'd go down 150. No. And, go, and I would just sit there and I'm like, oh if gosh, I so publicly stay under 100,000 after going past 100,000, <laughs> I don't know what I'm going to do. I'm just going to run away, <laughs> live in a ditch. <laughs> but that is the YouTube world for you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Sometimes you're like, wow and sometimes you're like Durr. exactly you just, you've got to be okay with the wave yeah i mean i've i've heard people that are like at the top that are, they're always complaining we're always complaining like yeah. oh i had not as many views or not as many subscribers this month man you got to realize it's a it's an up and it's down. an up and yeah. down so you're at 120k yeah i was at 120 and then i started doing videos consistently i just said uh, wednesdays and sundays i'm going to do some videos all the time and i stayed consistent until recently and i i actually screwed up my channel a little bit but it's okay because i'm gonna get it back and uh, the algorithm stuffed up a bit um because i took a break don't mm. take a break kids <laughs> did you see that youtube video that the creator studio put out no. like like the people who work at youtube made a video and said taking a break won't hurt your channel oh, so boo. go so go on that vacation and no. then everyone was like screw you guys you made a platform where you're if you take a break if you take a exactly suffers, yeah. but you're just going to get another virally video and then exactly. you're, you're good exactly. <laughs> uh so yeah i just uh i started making videos consistently i made a video how to pose and that's like at 3.5 million i think right now so that wow. like pushed it up for me massively that's probably around the same timeline of like mango street yes. and because they did some similar stuff too i honestly i think which is good. Thank God, like, good content this go around has been the one getting views. Mm. But the past year, it's been cool to see, like, that Mango Street, Peter McKinnon. Mm -hmm. Quality all, stuff. Yeah, and quality stuff mm. was bubbling up to the top. And I was like, yay, this is amazing. <laughs> I know. It's nice it's, to see quality it's faces. It's definitely not the consistent thing on YouTube. But 
so that's cool that you're a part of that yeah, yeah it was awesome so yeah that happened like in may i put up that video i think and that's still and then i had another one that went viral from i did a year ago and i knew it would go viral and now it's almost at two million but it was what like, is it what's the title uh it's uh i don't even know the title's complicated <laughs> but it's like basically me and three girls all different body sizes um mm-hmm. like uh, tiny muscular no curves me and then my uh girl another girl that's got like curves and then a girl that would be considered like too big or something and we all stand on the street in our underwear actually and we have things written across our bodies what people have said to us um, about our bodies like i'm too skinny eat a burger uh, all these other stuff and all of us are covered and it's just showing that no matter what you look like you're always gonna get crap there's (laughs) certain insecurities attached to everything yeah so that's uh-huh. going viral now. But um, yeah, just consistency. Um, those videos are just doing amazing. And that's uh, that's my answer for that one. That's <laughs> so cool. Well, and I think isn't that what you talked about at the recent um, Ireland YouTube convention yes. thing? How like how consistency plays such a big part Huge. in growing the channel. And I think Massive. it's so important since it's so based on the algorithm now. Mm if you can drill in your audience's head that mm. hey if you come back to this channel at this certain time and day yeah there will be a video that's something i haven't mastered yet Help. girl you gotta Help do me. it how do i do it <laughs> well you do so much stuff you just schedule this is the most important thing right like just get a video out quality video out, mm-hmm. and nothing else will push that like that yeah. is the thing that you have to do i don't know i'll try guys there. no i'll try do or do not i'll do it there is no try. okay <laughs> All right, guys, every Tuesday, Thursday, tune in to youtube.com slash Sarah <laughs> Just kidding. I'll work on that later. <laughs> JK. <laughs> don't, don't expect that. I can't make <laughs> promises like that. Uh, what's, so what's next for you? What, what, is, what is on your, you know, you, ha- you said you have a list of people. Yes. To meet. And you were one of them. Which is so. Yep. I'm so honored. It's so awesome. <laughs> yeah, I've been watching your stuff for so long. Really? Because I love that you're in the tech space. Yeah. And <laughs> I just, I love yes, that you're it. here. It's so, it's so, it's so cool. Yeah. And oh, I, I, I was like, okay, okay. And then one day, just recently, I was like, fuck, I'm yeah, just going to tweet her. <laughs> Twitter. Yeah. Yeah, that's, and that's funny that we went through the thing, like trying to get in touch with yeah. each other. And I use Twitter and you use Instagram. <laughs> I'm like, if anyone, no matter if it's a fan or another creator or like anyone, Twitter is Twitter the is move. the game. Twitter's the move. Yeah. yeah. And I, I saw you tweet at me like, girl. <laughs> yeah. I I'm watch so you. Glad. You're amazing. I'm be connected, Let's link. <laughs> it's so good. Yeah. But yeah. Then I just I wanna keep making I think I'm going into kind of short film territory again. Cool. Because I, I love uh, telling stories I think the most I used to I tried so many different avenues like photography is fun to talk about but mm-hmm. I, I think I want to get um, like short videos with nice messages out there yeah and productivity and human optimization stuff would be nice too I want to make this more of a like a global business instead of just YouTube mm-hmm. like I love YouTube obviously always my first love but I want mm-hmm. to make an empire of something and I've been waiting actually till like basically this moment <laughs> waiting until Bali uh, wait, waiting until buffer finishes when I go to Bali next um, it's been a really intense really intense year so far so much has happened and I've been just like dreaming of this moment because now my brain will be like and you can breathe mm-hmm. and you can be creative like what can you do that is going to be amazing productive like good for the world like what what's next and I'm, I'm excited to go to Bali eat yeah. great food and uh, hang out with my family and just figure out creative ideas how to have more fun with my job instead of being a stress yeah. head because I'm a bit of a stress head. Same. Sometimes sometimes you have to put in the work, whether that's one year, two years or whatever. Mm. And then once you kind of have that taste of success, that's when it's like, okay, let's take a step back, mm. appreciate it, but what's next? Yeah. I love that you use the word empire because I'm always like, I need to build my empire. Yes. Because why not? <laughs> why not? We need good yeah. people mm-hmm. to be in the spotlight yeah. and do great work for yeah. the world. What is of the what is your itch that you want to solve? Oh, plastic stuff. Really? Massively. Yeah. I don't, don't look at the water bottles. <laughs> I'm definitely not looking at the water bottle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I carry my little uh, water bottle with me. I have yeah. like a cutlery set with me all the time. Wow. I have a little cup for coffee generally, not today, my bad. <laughs> um, but I try to avoid plastic. So that's one thing. Okay. And then it pro- just helping... I don't know. I don't want to say helping people like be the best. I have to figure out the word for that still, yeah. the wording for it. But I always say live your best creative life. 
peace <laughs> peace <laughs> <laughs> no that's i i guess um my big thing is like the huge chip on my shoulder i think it's like education mm-hmm. and my attribution to the world is since John has convinced me that red meat is like killing our earth, I gave up burgers for the earth. Mm-hmm. So that's my that's my contribution. I, I've been off red meat for over a year. Amazing. Have you so, tried Beyond, Beyond Meat I burgers? Have. Oh my I God. Have. <laughs> they're, they're amazing. Yeah. So <laughs> not I'm not, honestly, I'll go for like a black bean quinoa burger before I'll do that. Oh my God. I, but they're my favorite yeah it's interesting but yeah impossible burgers and not impossible beyond, beyond. yeah they're it's beyond favorite. so it's beyond your yeah because it preferred. doesn't have wheat in it and it's better and or soy or any or anything like that yeah. interesting so beyond i think i've only had an impossible burger oh, so maybe that's my problem that's the problem so i need a beyond burger beyond tastes like meat it's the best <laughs> it's so good so beyond and impossible burgers are just examples of meatless meat basically and if you're used to the taste of a burger or a cheeseburger. Next time you go somewhere, just ask if they have that. And I think it's very interesting. But yeah. But congratulations so that's, on the that's contribution. That's my, yeah. But John is more of the, he's going to save the world that way. Nice. I think my way is education. education I just, so I want to be able to like, just first have my own hub of like creative people that I can help. And then, I don't know. A lot of people are already doing a really good job of that. Mm-hmm. Like Chase Jarvis with mm-hmm. Creative Live and like Skillshare. Mm-hmm it's just ugh, why are people maybe it's like going on a high school tour and just talking yeah. to kids raising awareness of using influence of like just okay, it's so messed up i understand that when you're 18 years old you have to make all these important financial decisions but it doesn't mean that you can't research yes. talk to your parents about this and, yeah maybe instead yeah. of having like the the stupid instagram uh ads hashtag sponsored of you know clothing things we can make it about education instead which would be so good yeah i'm I'm with you on that yeah let's make it happen Mm -hmm. any inspirational things that you want to say to people out there who are like i want to be a content creator i want to build my own business or maybe they just want to travel more Hmm. just any any of those things shed the wisdom oh the wisdom um okay did the first thing that came to me uh, and i understand that sometimes life is life can be very very hard Mm -hmm. um and a lot of people i mean i was lucky you know i I also had i think a lot of people always assume that you if you've made it you've had no no struggles as well it's like no i've had my struggles too um but you just have to kind of push through that and take it uh, as a gift that is helping you to grow and if you don't take it as a gift it's you're going to become a victim of it mm-hmm. and it's going to drill everything you. happens for a reason that mentality yeah. helps yeah it's going to drill you to the ground it's going to destroy you if you don't realize that it was a gift for you mm-hmm. so you have to just take it um, learn from it and um um, no one like you can blame people for stuff and your life is going to be crap mm-hmm. as a result of it or you can be like okay it happened yeah. let's do something like this is my life I don't want to be a hundred and take regret something. Yeah. You have to take power, man. Sometimes I will fall in the victim mentality of like being a woman in some situations, ah. you know? And I think there there is so much to say about certain situations and blah, blah, blah. I can talk about that forever. But sometimes I'm like, I think back at when I was younger, <laughs> back in my younger times, yeah. just in, in high school or whatever. Like I had no excuses for anything and I just had blinders on and Mm. I just did, 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 did. And I didn't look around. I didn't care how that person looked at me or if they didn't shake my hand or well, I just like did. Yeah. And sometimes I think the awareness of things, it's so important. Mm. And I think it is so important to be conscious of certain things and being able like, you know, inclusion is so important stuff. But like also you can fall into that victim mentality, which I don't think helps Anyone. It doesn't help anyone. It Even doesn't. With the women, woman stuff, I, I could easily also fall into that. Yeah. But at the same time, I choose to be like, okay, I'm a woman. Mm-hmm. I'm an in- industry that's generally for males. Let's make this you an can, opportunity. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. You can. I think you can flip everything. You can do a complete 180 with everything. Yeah, even, and look at more of like, wow, this is my uniqueness. Exa- so it is. That's yeah. exactly what it is. Yeah. Like there's this uh, um, public speaker and he's got. he was born with no arms, no legs. At wow. all. Zero. And that is his advantage now. Like wow. he goes around the world and he speaks to children about nothing is impossible. You can do whatever. 
And he took it as an advantage instead of sitting and like being upset about what happened. He was wow. like, no, this is good. And he made it good. It is literally your mindset. That's so That's powerful. That's all it is. And mm-hmm. sometimes it's hard to hear that. Like maybe you have had a tragic thing happen to you. It's happened. Mm-hmm. What can you do now? Yeah. And I think the bigger the hurdles, then that's just like a more epic story to tell. And exactly. That you can just inspire other so people other with people. that. Mm-hmm. And yeah, just the fact whenever I get in the victim mentality, I just sit back and I'm like, I'm healthy. Mm-hmm. I was born in the States. Mm-hmm. I have great Wi Fi. <laughs> like, there's so many things that so many people all over the world don't have. And yeah. I think that's also why I'm a big fan of like affirmations mm-hmm. and like expressing gratitude. Yes, and gratitude. Ooh, it's so important. That is an important one. It's so important. Every morning. Mm, so good. All right, so all, this was epic. This was where, so much Where can people find you out on the interwebs? Do you have your URL? Do you have youtube.com slash Sorella Amore? Okay. Everything, everything is Sorella. Sorella Amore. Sorella Amore. You know what was interesting? <laughs> People used to think Dici was Italian. So ah. in school, I would always be like, ah, Sara Dici. <laughs> That's how people would That's say awesome. my name. So there you go, guys. All Thank the links are in the show notes below. Sara Dici. Anything else? I just want to say you are amazing. You are amazing. And this is such an amazing. Thank you for having of me. Of course. This was your first podcast, yes, right? Yes, first podcast. Pop in the chair. I just love <laughs> you. You're just so cool. Thank you. So You're thank so you. Honestly, when cool people say that you're cool, that's the coolest thing. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Well, until next time, stay peachy, guys. Tune in next week and go check out Sorel Amore.